Apple shot the entire October 30th event on the iPhone and nobody noticed. In this video, I'm gonna talk about why Apple cares about this, why they care about Apple Log, why they care about external recording. I'm also gonna talk about the future of mobile filmmaking and just cameras in general. I mean, look at this. Look at this footage here. This shot of Johnny Shiruji, Sh the hardware technologies guy, just is super cinematic. It's not about the sensor. It's not about the overall image of the camera per se. Pretty much every modern camera could shoot this and it would look fantastic. But in the past, the iPhone couldn't even shoot this without it feeling like an iPhone. It's something that kind of has just been baked into the footage literally for years. And it's been completely wiped clean with Apple Log. With previous phones from Apple, you would always have this kind of plasticky HDR effect that even when you would use apps like Filmic Pro would still be there. It'd still be in the footage baked in. The Filmic Pro log is much sharper. And that's because again, they can't bypass Apple's built-in computational imaging and processing. And so you're getting that dynamic tone mapping and sharpening in the Filmic Pro log. You're not getting it in the Apple log. Apple has completely removed the cruft from the iPhone video when you're shooting log in particular, though the baked in kind of standard profile on the iPhone 15 Pro is great. And I have been using it a lot for home videos and it's totally acceptable for 99% of people. But I can tell that Apple has been doing a lot of work and R&D with color science and just overall image quality for video with the iPhone. We tested this phone through its lensing, light levels, the dynamic range, really figuring out how far we could push this phone. I was incredibly impressed with the quality of the footage. The first second I saw it, I literally said, this is the iPhone footage. Why is that? Who cares if it's literally like the smallest group of people using this feature, why would you go to all this trouble to put it into a phone that's being sold in the millions when only maybe even just a handful of people would even touch it or use that feature. I mean, it is hidden away. You need to even know that if you plug in an SD card with the USB-C or a USB-C SSD, that that's how you can record uh, longer takes. And, you know, if you're just a normal person and you turn on ProRes and you start filming, you're like, what the heck? This two minute clip filled up my entire phone. I mean, it's it's insane how big these files are with ProRes. And I do hope that Apple will give us like an H.264 or H.265 recording that still maintains a 10 bit color space. Cause that is the most important thing for me is having something that's at least 10 bit, uh, preferably 422 so that you have a lot of room to color grade and post. But I digress, why would Apple care to do all this for such a small group of people. Marketing, 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 marketing. At the end of this video, everybody was excited about the computers, obviously. The new M3 was announced with the M3 Pro and the M3 Max, which I'm very excited about. Apple also invented a new color, black. Comes in a stunning new color that's unmistakably pro. Introducing MacBook Pro in space black. At the end of the video, it said, this event was shot on the iPhone and edited on a Mac. Not Final Cut, by the way, which means they probably used Resolve. And guess what everybody said on Twitter slash X? I can't believe that was shot on an iPhone. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Everybody's tweeting. Every YouTuber that you know is talking about the fact that it was shot on the iPhone. I wonder what this next year's Super Bowl iPhone ad is gonna be shot on. It's gonna be shot on the iPhone. And they're gonna make sure that you know at the end, hey, this whole commercial that's super epic and well shot and it also cost us $3 million to produce was shot on the iPhone. <laughs> Normal people think that's cool. I mean, I think it's cool. It is cool. And up until this point, pros just were kind of like not thrilled to use phones for uh, productions. Steven Soderbergh has, is a famous filmmaker who's shot two feature films, I believe, maybe more on iPhones. I think... Unseen was shot on the iPhone 7, which looked very much like an iPhone. It did not look good, but they pulled it off. You know, hats to Soderbergh here. I would love to see him. Oh my gosh. Soderbergh has to be making a movie right now on the 15 for Apple TV. Of course, right? Why not? 
This is in Apple's interest to have a phone that actually shoots good video with industry leading, actually professional color space technology. It's, you know, Apple Log is a ASUS, it's ASUS certified, which means it can blend into any footage shot on an Alexa, on a RED. With log encoding, iPhone 15 Pro will be the first smartphone in the world to support the Academy Color Encoding System, or ASUS, a global standard for color workflows, making it easier for filmmakers to use iPhone in their production. Filmmakers now can use an iPhone realistically on an actual set. And because of the USB-C port that they put on it that opens up a ton of accessory possibilities, you can actually charge the phone, record all your footage externally, have the HDMI output for Video Village. Oh, USB-C out, powering 50 monitors, and it's going off without skipping a beat. Mic input jacks or timecode jacks if you're a professional. And of course, just some sort of cage with like a filter thread on it. So you could put ND filters or a matte box on the system. Why would you build it up like this? It's advertising, guys. It's advertising. It's not because the phone is better than an Alexa or even better than a cheap Sony camera. The FX30 would be a better camera to use. Duh. Like it's, it's a larger sensor. You could change the lenses out. It's marketing. Who's paying for these films? Apple. If Apple wants to give Steven Soderbergh $100 million to make a film, but the only requirement is that he shoots on an iPhone and then they promote the crap out of it, it's great marketing, man. That's why they're doing it. But that's kind of the cynical angle for sure. The exciting angle for me is that the iPhone now can be a wide angle shot and actually mix in with your real footage. If you're running around with a gimbal and you have good lighting, why would you use a normal camera if you don't need to? You could have a normal camera on a monopod or handheld or whatever, but then you could have your phone now on a gimbal or not even on a gimbal, just hand hold it because the stabilization is so good and use that as kind of your wide establishing camera. I mean, as you can see in a lot of the footage here from the event, there's nothing that tells me that it was shot on a telephoto. Every shot that I see in the keynote seems to be shot on the 1X lens. There's nothing super wide and there's nothing super tight, which makes sense. The 1X is the lens to shoot on. It's a much bigger sensor and a sharper lens altogether, faster aperture as well. I mean, if I was the DP on this production, I would literally take gaff tape and cover up the wide angle lens and the telephoto and just be like, nope, we're not using those. We're only using the 1X, it's the best one. Don't even think about it. I really just want a cage or some sort of grip that I could slot my phone into that gives me like a proper camera hand grip, uh, SD card slot or some way to mount an SSD, an HDMI out, a mic input and a headphone jack, and then a way to charge it. You know, whether the grip itself is a battery that can charge it via MagSafe or it's some sort of loop through system where I could just have an external battery pack in my pocket or, or maybe like a grip that uses Canon batteries or Sony L batteries or something. I don't know. There's ways that you can rig this up and it's really exciting because there's a lot of problem solving that we can start to do now. I think now is the moment where we're seeing an actual intersection happening. The only phone camera that I've ever seen that actually rivals that of a mirrorless camera is the Sony Xperia line, which has come out over the last couple of years. And, and this last year in particular, they added S Cinetone to their Xperia line and it looks great. It does look very good. Also imagine the teenagers who are coming up, the next generation of filmmakers who are legitimately 13, 14 years old right now. Their parents are maybe buying the 15 Pro and they can use their parents' phone to make a short film. And it's shot in log, like real ASUS professional ProRes log. It's accessible now to a 13 year old. And they can download a free program called Resolve and Color Grade. It's the same program that the filmmakers use. I mean, guys, if we're complaining about stuff, like just take a chill pill and like really assess where we're at right now with the industry. This is exciting. Like this is awesome. I'm stoked. Resolve, not Final Cut. Also, this video was shot on the iPhone in Apple Log and I converted the footage using my iLuts conversion light, which is free to download in the description below.